so much has been achieved over the last three years, but there is still so much more to be done. It really is about working together to make you and your family safer. My name's Donna Jones and I'm the Police and Crown Commissioner for Hampshire and the Isle of Wight. Back in 2020, the Home Office launched the Safer Streets Fund. Here in Hampshire and the Isle of Wight, we have been really successful in securing over £3 million and that includes £645,000 for the City of Southampton. And throughout this film, you're going to see exactly what the City Council, my office as Police and Crown Commissioner, along with Home Office funding, are doing to make your communities as safe as they can be. So with Safer Streets 4, we saw the opportunity to respond to a number of key issues for communities within the city. Violence against women and girls, the safety in the nighttime economy, also antisocial behaviour and how we combat that in some of our areas. The issues we run into in the nighttime economy involve large scale public order, serious assaults, sexual assaults, to something as uh, trivial as uh, some people being too intoxicated and unable to get themselves home safely. The nature of what we consider violence against women and girls has, has changed over time and the accessibility to be abusive is so much more. I spoke to loads of students about how they were feeling and they were worried about going to certain establishments, nightclubs, but also worried about attending bars and things at our student union. Young people do talk about feeling unsafe. I think it's become almost a daily reality of not feeling safe. When we look for solutions, the people who were surveyed said the focus should be on education, you know, to improve behaviours of men towards women, of boys towards girls, and a preventative approach to get further upstream to stop bad things happening downstream. But the balance is with it is we're faced with the here and now, so we're faced with Friday and Saturday nights, incidents still occur. So the safeguards that we recognise we could put in place short term with the view of having long term behavioural change, preventative measures in place was sort of a combination that we could see really coming out of Safer Streets for and is what we've implemented. Collaboration's key, none of us can do the work that we do in isolation. We coordinate all the different agencies, all the people involved in the nighttime economy. Hi, dude. All right. As committed Christians, we're putting our faith into action, doing something very practical on the streets, listening to people that want to talk to us that may have problems they want to talk about. So where are you sleeping tonight? Anything else we can do? We carry slippers or flip-flops. We're there to listen, to help and to care. Get home safely. I will, my love. Take care. God bless. And we're part of trying to keep Southampton a safer place. So if the police need help with someone that's maybe had a bit too much to drink or a bit distressed, we can go along, stay with that person, the police can go off and deal with the more serious things they are around for. Police look out for us and we look out for the police too. So. And it's very much teamwork. Can you see her from here? Yeah. We have funded two nighttime security wardens who patrol the city from 8pm to 5am on a Friday and Saturday evening. So they work with the street pastors, the police. Having chats with people, just making sure that they're safe, how they're getting home, and just getting involved and trying to be as polite as possible, always with a smiling face. Their main objective is to look out for vulnerable women and girls and guiding them to the right resources if they need further help. Violence against women and girls is a false priority. Some of my officers are being trained by a specialist company to identify indicators which would suggest males are exhibiting signs of being predatory towards females. The idea of that is that we can intercept them before any act is committed and alert uniformed officers who will stop and question those subjects and deal with them. We have policies where we don't have single males come into venues. We'll have policy on females approaching door staff and a system that we follow, welfare areas and safety points. Safe and well monitors that patrol the parks, the city parks, the dark areas, all the high risk venue areas, the outsides, and sometimes they'll go into venues and check on whether there's predatory behaviour inside of venues. They'll escort people to taxis, stay with them if they need to, and consult with door staff or police where necessary. 
It's really important to communicate with any other sort of team that's out on the night shift. We communicate through radio, through Whiskey One, the Southampton CCTV camera watch. As the City Watch and Southampton City Council, we've got a tie up with a lot of other agencies that work in and around the city to help people. As soon as we spot something, we just make sure we inform them saying that this is what's going on. So anybody around that area, that includes the other venues as well, they would keep an eye and watch out for. I have come across a lot of incidents taking place in the night time. Antisocial behaviour has increased as well. There were so many incidents happening inside the park. So at the moment we've got few cameras been installed there, which is amazing. And on peak times during weekends, bringing in a new operator has helped and having those new cameras has hugely helped us in monitoring the city and keeping the city safe. The ATV was an idea of mine, it's an all-terrain quad bike essentially. It was just to highlight the fact that I wanted my officers in the parks and it was a way of highlighting the fact that we are aware that the parks, some people can find them quite intimidating at night. So I ensured that there was an ATV in the parks with an officer, sometimes two officers involved and officers on push bikes as well to patrol those areas and to offer some reassurance and deter criminality. Safer Streets funding from the Home Office is what allows us to be here. So that's what lets Southampton City Council designate a red night and say we'd like St John out on that night to prevent enormous hospital admissions and huge demand on 999. So because Southampton is a two university city, we obviously have a huge number of students and the club district is mainly concentrated around above Bar Street, which is where we place ourselves as a project. And we're able to become a kind of safe haven for the students on a night out. I know that a lot of people feel a lot safer going out at night now, partly because of this kind of project, partly because of things like the cooperation between all the different agencies, us, security staff, police, street pastors, works really well. So there is some images in tonight's presentation of things that we're training for, so uh, images of stabbings and wounds and things like that, so if anybody doesn't like that sort of thing then I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Emergency bleed kits are packs that we're distributing to uh, different stakeholders around Southampton and within them they carry all the equipment that people might need to stop a life-threatening bleed or treat someone who has, for example, a penetrating injury to their, to their chest or their torso. We've rolled out training to probably 30 or more members of the teams across Southampton Nighttime Economy. The initial early life-saving interventions is what's going to save the person's life. Packing, so yeah, we're packing, packing I mean. Packing, packing, packing. Right, you've packed it fully, we're going to do now. <laughs> Pressure on it for a yeah. minute. Yeah. We brought in Stop the Bleed training because we knew there was a lot more stabbings, a lot more incidents involving knives. It meant that when we have the NHS, they're under a lot of pressure, then it means we can prevent somebody from potentially dying because we've got the training. Obviously, because we're in the nighttime economy, we're basically the eyes in the area. We've noticed a sort of a, a rise in knife crime in Southampton, so we actually do checks of all the venues around the outside for knives and things like that that are stashed away. And then obviously that's when we call in the police and anyone else that's involved. Southampton Student Union was involved in the Safer Streets Fall funding as we managed to secure £5,000 from the City Council to put together safety initiatives. One of these safety initiatives was our Southampton Says Enough campaign. This is a gender inclusive campaign to tackle sexual harassment and violence within Southampton. And a big priority for them is getting home safe and finding a lit walking route home. The resources that we use Safer Streets for funding for was, for example, the safety alarms. So if a student is in danger, they can pull this trigger. A loud noise comes from the alarm and it's to act as a deterrent for anyone trying to harm the student or can act as a call for help so people can kind of come and support the student. We also have the check your drink drink testing strips, which we've been able to distribute. And we've also got stop tops, which we use in our local bars. For the Safe Surveillance campaign, we partnered with Radio Taxis. 
We have a phone within the library which can be used by students. The taxis are free for students and they allow them to be taken back to their accommodation but if they're also commuting into Southampton it takes them to the train stations. One of the things that our analysts looked at also was the correlation of violence and violence against women and girls in particular with our areas of deprivation. That's the same, I think, for lots of colleagues within public health, within education. So we're really conscious of that, but that's also important about where we concentrate our activity, because if we're concentrating the, the geographical response in areas where it's required, we stand a better chance for improvement and support. So for example, within Millbrook and Redbridge, that comes up as a recorded antisocial behaviour hotspot. So that's one of the reasons why we really wanted to get in and support that area. We're engaged in a, an art project with the community, uh, decorating the changing rooms at Green Park and has involved our community engagement team and the local community and young people. I went into Redbridge Community School and worked with Year 9 children, looking at what they thought about where they live and what they would like to see in the area, but also doing that in a very creative way. Adding a mural like this to community space really brightens the area up, but also makes the locals feel proud of their area. Like we've had all sorts of different kind of people walking past today, uh, really appreciating what we're doing. Kids get ideas from it to make their own creative artwork. Yeah, it just makes people happier. We'd seen a rise in motorcycle thefts, so the plans that we've got to stop motorcycle thefts, simple as providing a lock and chain. You know, can we do something to physically stop it? It's not the, the be all and end all answer to it, but for a lot of owners who live in that area of deprivation who may not have funds to get that, we can give them a bike, lock and chain for free. And that's really important because if you use your scooter, your motorbike to get to work, and you come out and find it's gone in the morning, there's all sorts of implications. It's wider than just the crime, it's the impact of the crime on the people. So again, we're really keen to try and help the community around that. The STAR project is the education outreach part of Yellow Door. We go into schools and we speak to children about safer relationships, internet safety. One project that I'm really proud of is reducing violence against women and girls projects that we've done in a school with a group of boys and they have designed a project around reducing violence against women and girls, kind of recognising that males are majority of the time the perpetrators and taking that as responsibility and tackling it with their peers, becoming an active bystander. It was really important for us to have male workers in this post because the target group was going to be a boys peer-led project. The Violence Against Women and Girls strategy does focus on the male perpetrating behaviours, but what we didn't want to do was to say, because you're a young boy, you're more likely to perpetrate these crimes. It was really important for our male workers to be able to build those relationships to say, these are some of the issues that are presented to you as a young man, and we need to work out how best we can prevent further violence against women and girls from occurring in the future. I think also with the antisocial behaviour, it, it's that crossover with what we were looking at as a city council in terms of youth activities and diversion. So to make sure that young people could access things that was going to engage them outside of school and to stop them getting involved in antisocial behaviour and crime. So co-designing that, involving local communities and that again was really important. It's funded a new piece of work really that we're doing, which is detached youth work. Although detached youth work's not been something that's been happening in Southampton for a while now, but one of the things that we're trying to do is be around Bedford Place and London Road as the school comes out. It's been highlighted that that can be a quite unsafe space or uh, young women being victims of sexual harassment and stuff like that. So just being present and being someone and building a relationship with young people that they could go, oh, you guys, can you, can you help? We specifically have a partnership with Children's Services and the Young People's Hub that work with some of the most vulnerable children in the city. We also you know, are linked to with the Missing, Exploited and Traffic team. We are in Southampton in Millbrook and we are running a project called the Urban Street Cooking Project which is predominantly for teenagers. I think getting young people off the street and doing something productive, something they're enjoying, 
young people will tell you exactly what they want and what they don't want. Half the time it's not always a youth club that will work, so actually giving them the tools, equipment and actually something they will find beneficial as they go on in life actually speaks to them more. And as we've done this project, that's what the teenagers have asked. They want more, they'd like to know how to cook sushi, they'd like to cook more. And this, in this project in particular, we will have the time to be able to do that with them. The Junior Warden Scheme is, is a preventative scheme, so it's really looking at predominantly council housing tenants because we're funded through them, working with young people to try and make them the next set of citizens, so good citizens. Just recently we had a, a trailer purchased through the Safer Streets Fund. It can be used by the Junior Wardens, but it also can be used by all the other departments in the council, fostering services, community engagement team, it will be used by outreach teams so they can go out in the evenings with it. So it's a really good bit of kit we can use across the city. But it is all about joint working, all working together to the same goal. We're already beginning to see the difference and the positive impact of the Safer Streets funding. So the various projects funded by Safer Streets have made a vast difference to the city centre in the way in which we are able to police it and manage vulnerability and take care of people and keep them safe at night. Uh, things like the wardens, the additional CCTV cameras, the town link radios, the street pastors all make a difference and keep people safe and let them enjoy their night in Southampton without any fear of being attacked or when they're the most vulnerable. We have had students who have used the alarms when walking home at night or coming back from nightclubs and they said that they feel safer carrying the alarm so that's a really positive for us. I've given many tours around the university and in part of the tour we explain about Safe Solent and how uh, it kind of impacts students and allows them to get around safely and you can see the eyes of the parents, they just light up in knowing that their you know, sons and daughters are going to be able to get from university no matter how late they've been working. An instant selling point for both the university and the city. The initial responding people have now got the same equipment and the same training as an initial responding ambulance. Those initial life saving things are already underway by the time we get there. Certainly the feedback we've had from them is that it's increased their confidence in being able to deal with such a situation if it occurs and the bleed kits have been used on a number of occasions uh, to, to good effect. We recognise that there is a there's an opportunity there to, to shape the future generations um, and as we, as we work with those young men moving into that adult part of their life, it's really important that this, this agenda of uh, violence against women and girls is not uh, a flash in the pan sort of thing. I think the evaluation of projects like this is important so that we have an understanding of how the projects work. It's our responsibility as academics to work collaboratively to produce the type of evidence that's useful. I'd hope to achieve that we'd engage young people that would not necessarily come into No Limits Advice Centre, be engaged with other services and that we'd be able to build relationships with them and give them a route to A, either come into a place like this or just to have someone that they can talk to or feel a bit safer with. The first two hours we met them, the first time they came in, they were so, so quiet and so shy. And by the end of the two hours, it was like we had met them and been with them for six months. They were chatting, they couldn't wait to tell us how it went and what they'd learned. And some of them are going to college in September, so it's good that we can give them some more self-esteem that they can do it. Just sitting down and drawing, inspired by it. Even and also just like dog walkers and older people uh, saying it's really nice to see something like this in their community. Generally what it is to be a good citizen, a good neighbour and hopefully bring them up to be our next really good tenants. Southampton has always been a city that comes together, an amazing city with a great history of diversity, culture and community. I am so proud of our partnership and what we have achieved together. We won't stop here. We are committed to making Southampton a safer city for all, building on this platform and future funding to continue to deliver this vital work. Thank you.